Kia ora koutou. It's great to have you along to this Education Outdoors New Zealand mini webinar series. Um, this webinar series is looking at the Revisioning School Camps Professional Development Programme that we've been running since 2019. And um, we'll be having three webinars as part of this series. Um, each will look at a different aspect of the professional development. Um, my name is Sophie Watson and I'm the Professional Development Lead for this programme. Um, and it's great to have you along today. Just some housekeeping things before we get started as we've got different people joining. Um, please make sure that your microphone is on mute. Um, each webinar will be about 40 minutes long and um, after I've run through the presentation, then there'll be a chance for you to unmute um, and ask your questions or you can pop your questions in the chat box at any time and we'll get back to those at the end. Um, just a bit of background on the Revisioning Soil Cancer Professional Development. So we've been running this since 2019 with support from the Network of Expertise Funding. And um, this professional development program looks at supporting schools and teachers to develop place responsive, student centred and localised school camp programs. Um, we've delivered all around the country and um, we're now into our third round of those. And I'll talk about more opportunities to engage with that soon. Um, if you haven't already, I recommend that you go onto the um, EON's website and check out the revisioning school camps um, section there. And it's actually based on a free resource that we have available um, and we developed that into professional learning. So I definitely engage with that resource. And then there are a whole lot of case studies and other information that can help you in your own revisioning school camps process. Um, this webinar today is gonna to be covering the what, why and how of revisioning your school camp. So um, it might give you a bit of an idea around the process um, of what's involved in that revisioning um, of your school camps. Um, just a couple of things, you might hear me say school camp experiences rather than school camps. And that's a deliberate choice um, to help people think outside of the box a little bit more with their thinking. When we think of school camps, we might go back to our own school camps or the existing uh, school camps that we have, which sometimes can be quite traditional or have traditional elements. And so um, school camp experiences helps us to think about that more broadly. Um, so what are some components that we might be able to bring in that we hadn't previously thought about? Or perhaps it means that we might be changing the setting um, or the location of where we're running these camps. So just broaden your mind a little bit um, as we go through today's webinar presentation. Um, right. Um, so just a little bit about Education Outdoors New Zealand in case you are unfamiliar with us. Um, we're a subject association or a professional body for all learning that takes place outside of the classroom. Um, so things around safety management, um, curriculum development, we provide one-to-one -one, um, support for schools in any aspect of the EOTC program. Um, so if you have any questions around that, then um, please get in touch with us and definitely check out the website, like I said, because there's a, a range of resources that you can access there. Also I want to take the opportunity to um, promote the national EOTC database. So this is um, a national database um, that captures all important information for EOTC coordinators in schools. So if you're not sure whether your school is registered, um, please ask around. Usually it's the EOTC coordinator or a senior leadership team member that holds the direct contact. Um, if you're still unsure, then reach out to us and um, we can check whether your school is part of it or not. But definitely make sure you're signed up. Um, we don't spam you with stuff, but we certainly give you the important things that you need to know around EOTC updates, like for instance, around the COVID level changes and how to manage that with your EOTC. Right, so getting into things. Um, we are gonna be looking at the what, why, and how of revisioning school camps, like I said earlier today. Um, so the first thing we wanna start with is why? Why are you offering school camps? Um, no doubt you're here because you, um, you think that school camps or school camp experiences are a really important part of your students' learning journey um, and that they can add a lot of value to what our students are learning and their development. So the first thing that we really need to consider is the purpose. What is our why? And I recommend that schools go back to their school charter um, to look at what is the purpose of education at your school? How does your school see learning in your place? And like all learning experiences that we give our students, school camp and school camp experiences should be tied in with that as well. It shouldn't be something that's just an additional or something that's just fun. We certainly want school camp to be fun, but it needs to be grounded in the same philosophies and approaches that we have 
for all our curriculum learning. So think about why does your school offer camp and how does it fit into the school's vision and goals? That's a really important part of this. Um, I recommend that if you're just, um, if you're just, if you're a teacher um, and you don't have a senior leadership role or a middle leadership role, I recommend that you team up with someone um, in those positions. Um, while it certainly can be impactful and you can make adapters to your own practice, it's really helpful to have the support of senior leadership to have that wraparound support so they can give you support with professional development. They can create those systems changes that are really important that can help to make school camp experiences flourish. Um, however, if you don't have that support, um, no stress, you can still make this happen. Um, just make sure that you, you have a good team around you and find the other champions in your school. It's also really important to consider what are your school camp traditions? Um, often we hear that traditions can have an impact on what the possibilities of a new school camp experience might look like. We take a strengths-based approach with this professional development. So I want you to hold on to the things that you're doing really well. And maybe that's not an activity, or maybe it is, or maybe it might be the location, but no doubt there'll be some things that you're doing really well already. And it's about building on that and streamlining everything else around it. So don't feel like you have to throw everything out or maybe you do and that's exciting if you, you are taking that approach. But um, start with what are the things that you're doing well. And then start looking at what impact do the traditions and your current school camp setup have on student learning and opportunity. So again, we always want to come back to what are the experiences our students are having? Does that align with their needs? Does that align with our school vision? Um, what's actually happening on camp around our students' learning and well-being? Another really important thing to consider is how has your school community been engaged and involved in planning camp? I know a lot of schools have gone back to um, consult with their community as they've begun their revisioning process. And I would highly recommend that, not just talking with students, and teachers, but talking with Fano and finding out from them what are the things that are really important to you about school camp experiences for your, your child, and what would you like them to walk away at the end of their time at school, and how might school camp feed into that? So make sure that you're doing that in a really genuine, authentic way, and asking those critical questions, not just what was the most fun that you, or what was the, the part you enjoyed most on camp, but what did you learn about yourself? What did you learn about others? What's something that you might share with other people about what you learned? Um, what is missing for you? Were you anxious before you went home camp? What were you anxious about? Um, those kind of questions will help you to develop a much more wraparound curriculum-based school camp experience. And finally, again, bringing it back to the learning. So are your camps or camp experiences integrated with any other part of your students learning at school? And the answer should be yes. And then the next question is how? So where are those um, connections happening? To what depth? Um, perhaps it's focusing around, um, you know, you want to use camp as a start of year thing to build community within the school. And that's fantastic. So you're focusing on the, the front end of the curriculum, but no doubt there are opportunities that are being missed in the uh, subject learning area end of the curriculum that could be expanded on here. So thinking about how you might be able to build on what students are learning to make it a much more rich experience. So I certainly um, starting with the purpose, the why is the most important part and that will take time. So when you've got a good clear understanding of that and you've got, okay, we've got this base layer, we know that we want to achieve X, Y, Z, we know that these things are important to our school and our students and our community and our teachers. Um, then you can start to get to the really exciting part, which is the, the what. So this is where we start to go a bit more in depth. And now that we've got our why, we've got our foundation and we can use it as a touchstone to go back to. We start to look at what is the learning that is going to take place in the school camp experience? And how can that learning be facilitated or taught or structured prior, during and after camp? So sometimes what I've seen in schools is that camp is this one-off experience and there might be some learning, rich learning that takes place during camp, but there's nothing to support students before camp or after camp to really maximise that experience. Sometimes we also see that 
students are really anxious before camp or that we expect students to do all this learning on camp when we haven't actually set them up to su uh, succeed on camp. So I think it's, we could also use camp as a way for our students to flourish and use those skills that we've supported them to develop before camp and then apply them on camp so they can really thrive. So that might be around um, simple things like actually how do we communicate with our classmates when we're under stress? What attributes do I have that can contribute to a really positive, successful environment? Do I know what other attributes my classmates have? What do I know about the place that I'm going to? How might I be able to use problem solving? How might I be able to um, apply my place-based knowledge or my knowledge of history or culture or art? Um, so really starting to delve into what learning um, do your students need to thrive on camp and then back mapping that. Like I said before, making sure that camp is connected to the rest of your students' experiences at school. Um, and so uh, an example here is that one school, a primary school, um, found that a lot of their students were anxious before they went on camp. And um, they did some unpacking around that and found actually, we're assuming that our students have all these skills that we haven't prepared them for. Um, and they, they're really struggling on camp. And so they, one teacher designed this pre-camp gamified program and so what happened there was that um, this teacher thought about what are all the things my students need to succeed on camp and then taught in a term leading up to camp all of those things, but in a gamified way. So students worked in small groups to make a board game and they used, made character cards that looked at what attributes do I have that would be really um, helpful on camp? What attributes do my classmates have? And they were the character cards. They did mapping activities, which used art and mathematics and some literacy to actually map out the um, camp location. And they used that as the base for their board game, uh, actual playing area. And then they came up with scenario cards. So this was like worst case, best case scenarios. So things that students were really worried about. What happens if there's a possum or a spider? What happens if I get lost? What happens if X, Y, Z happens? And so students worked through these problems that were their real anxieties and came up with, well, how can we manage that? And they were scenario cards um, on the board game. And so there were a whole bunch of other activities that happened around that board game, around the development of the board game that all prepared students for camp. And then the students actually played their games with each other. Um, so that's a really great example of how students are prepared that has a wrap around um, curriculum learning and then when the students got to camp, they were amazing, the teacher told me. They knew exactly what to do. Tricky situations came up, they were prepared. And the teacher also said that anxiety was hugely reduced and not even a problem anymore. So they didn't have any students bedwetting. They didn't have any students wanting to go home because the students knew what was happening and they felt prepared. I just think that's a great example of the kind of things that we can be doing to support our students prior to camp. I think it's also really important to acknowledge, you know, what are your current realities or parameters? Um, so maybe that might be around um, funding. And we know that the um, funding landscape of education in Aotearoa has changed quite a bit in the last few while. So perhaps you're part of the donation scheme, perhaps not, but we know that we can't charge for um, day trips anymore. And the only thing cost that you can ask for um, towards a donation of a school camp experience um, is around uh, accommodation and transport and food. So um, it's all gonna be manageable um, and no student can be excluded from camp regardless of whether they um, make a contribution or not. Um, then perhaps you might also be limited because of your distance from particular locations that you feel might be best served for a camp or maybe your staff um, might be lacking some confidence or competence around knowing how to keep um, students safe in outdoor learning environments or even just know how to or what to, de to deliver on camp. So I would recommend identifying what are your actual parameters and what are your challenges that you're facing and then taking a step back and going what actually are our proper challenges. I, sometimes I think we put those limitations in place um, without really letting ourselves go big picture thinking. So I would certainly encourage you to look at the challenges but then block those and go big picture and think actually is this just a constraint that we're we're creating in our in our head although I don't really want to put it like that um, and what is an actual um, constraint 
Um, we certainly want to be leaning on and um, referring to our local curriculum. Um, that's really, really important. And, um, and that will help make sure that what you're delivering is relevant to your students. Um, there, obviously, there are great links there towards the key competencies and the, um, the different learning areas as well. And so now you can start to look at the process. So this is how is this camp going to happen? You've got your very clear why. Your what has been built upon your why and making sure that's always connected. And now you're going to look at how are you actually going to implement this camp. So like I've just said, you're going to identify the why. You're going to review the existing camp. And remember, strengths-based approach, we're looking at what are the good things that are going on that you can build on and what are the things that are, you can let go of now that aren't quite serving in the way that you'd hoped or that they have in the past. Get your students and community involved, get their feedback, find out what their needs and priorities are. And sometimes that might be a bit of a rub between what you know as an educator is valuable and what your community might see as being valuable from a school camp experience. So it might also be a process of educating your community around what is possible and um, what uh, value different experiences can add. And then the part that I love the most is getting brains, um, brainstorming and being creative. So um, there are some great activities that you can do and we cover these in the professional development, um, like a mapping activity. So identifying your local area or maybe further afield, or if you do have a camp location that you're set on using, you could also do this for, for that location. And identifying, you know, what do you know about this place? What are some stories of this place? Maybe historical, cultural, um, personal stories looking at what resources are, that are there, looking at um, what learning opportunities could you build on using the, the intricacies of that place. And then um, start uh, linking those to your learning objectives um, or learning intentions. Um, so again, connecting with that why. But it's really important when we think about our camp, you know, we want it to be responsive to the place that we're in. Um, and that can really make that learning experience much more rich rather than just being able to go to a camp and you could do that camp anywhere. Um, I think it, we, we have a lot of opportunity gained when we start to look at what that place offers um, and what is unique to that place. And then like we talked about on the last um, couple of slides, considering what students need to be fully prepared and back mapping that. Um, so making sure that they are really um, confident and they have the skills they need to thrive on camp. And you'll find that you have far less behavioral issues or that students gain a lot more from their experiences when they're prepared. So you might want to create a, a unit of work like um, the example I gave before and link it to existing learning, or maybe you might join in with a bunch of different um, teachers that if you're in a secondary school context that um, can link all together, or it might be an inquiry based project where the camp fits in. And finally, um, how, does you, how are you going to build on this camp learning post camp? Um, and so that might not be within that year, like if you have your camp in term four, obviously it might be quite challenging to bring that in, but certainly passing on that information to the next year's teacher or thinking about the prog progression plan that you have within your school of camp so that students aren't just doing a similar level of challenge of camp each year, they're actually building on those skills. So perhaps they're taking more ownership or perhaps they're going to a different place or perhaps the focus is different, but trying to identify the thread that draws it all together. And some schools use journeys as a way of that or some kind of narrative that might link to their school vision or values or the culture of the school. And that can be a really nice way of kind of bringing that journey focus along. So here are some key questions that you might want to ask yourself um, as you're going through your review process. So thinking about what your camps currently look like, and what things have influenced that uh, culture or that way of doing things? Um, do you know where those things came from? And if you don't, maybe it's a good time to ask, you know, why are we still doing those things? Are they still relevant? Certainly looking at the positive things about camp and maybe just picking to start with one or two things that you want to focus on changing. I think it's really important to remember that change takes a while and it can be a lot of work. I acknowledge and certainly from my own experience um, running many camps over the years, is that it's a huge amount of work. And so we don't want to feel burnt out or overburdened by that. So making sure that you've got a team of people around you to implement those changes. Um, find your champions and um, build a team and divvy out the work. 
Um, but certainly focus on changing only a couple of things to start with and then making bigger changes over time. And then definitely ask them the question, what's missing or what opportunities haven't we quite met just yet? So again, take the blinkers off, think about the big picture, go blue sky, and then map that against what you've currently got going on and, um, and move forward from there. Here are some common challenges that um, through the professional de development that I've seen teachers and leaders talk to me about. So one of them is that your senior leadership team or the staff that you're working with are not on board with the challenges of camp. And part of that is around making sure that everyone has been part of developing the new why or developing the what, and that staff feel confident to take on those changes and their ideas feel valued. Now, obviously, reality can be really challenging, um, and we're not going to be able to necessarily get everyone on board. And so depending on your position in the school, like I said, find your allies, find your champions that are on the same page as you. They may not teach the classes that you teach, but perhaps each of you are interested in bringing in elements of um, different school camp experiences into your own teaching. And so start to build momentum that way. Show people what is possible through your own practice change. Changing your school camp can be really overwhelming and people don't know where to start sometimes. And my advice is start small. Perhaps it's not about changing the location the first time around. Perhaps it's actually just exploring what is possible in that place. What stories could you tell about that place that you go to? Perhaps you might give a, a small section of the camp over to your students and say, hey, what would you like to organize that you're gonna lead during this part? So you might start off quite constrained in that way and then following years building on that. Perhaps you might survey your students and find out, you know, what needs have I not met in leading up the camp? And you might just do one small unpacking of that. Um, so you don't have to overhaul the whole camp, just start small if you are feeling overwhelmed. Um, some people also find that they don't feel like they're in a position to be able to make change or make decisions. And I totally understand the frustrations of this if you're not in a position of leadership. But again, I would just go back to focusing on your own practice and making those small changes in your own practice. Even if you aren't able to control the camp um, program, think about the activity that you might be responsible for or the students that you're responsible for. And even role modeling or experimenting um, with students in those small um, pockets of time that you have with them. So focus on your own practice and role model what is possible and that way people are more likely to jump on board with you. Another common challenge is limited finances and locations available. So particularly, I mean, rural schools tend to be in a position where they're either surrounded by amazing um, locations for camp or they are really isolated from other places. And the same with really urban schools that either have a lot of opportunity for um, camp locations or they're really limited. Camp does not have to be way over in another place. You can actually have urban camps that are really meaningful and meaningful and impactful. Um, so some schools that I've been working with no longer do overnight residential camps. They have um, camps that are based in their local environment. So the location is really um, recognizable and important to students in terms of the local history. And the students go home each night. So, and then they come back the following day. So they do have a chunk of time on camp but they return home each night. And that works really well because it means that it's not a barrier in terms of cost, same with transport, and that students can return to those locations again and again and again and build up their own knowledge of place and care of place. So again, it's, it's more about us thinking um, and thinking about um, what opportunities are right near me that I've never really thought about. And for some schools that might be, particularly for primary schools, camping on your own school ground that's a really great way to start, particularly in the lower le levels of school, to start building up to higher progressions and, and different ways of running school camps or school camp experiences. But <clears throat> that's, um, that's certainly an option. And so I wouldn't dismiss that. Um, you might also, if you're in an urban area, want to talk to your local councils about whether there are any suitable sites that, that, that might be nearby that you could use just for a night for a local camp camping experience. Um, finally, uh, staff, staff capability and um, capacity. And so this is about finding out what strengths 
and what different things each all of your staff members know and can do. So um, I always remember being surprised, even after being at a school for 10 years, realizing that some staff members had this, this amazing passion and skill that I never realized that they had, even though we were often in conversation. So having those really deliberate planning sessions where you find out what the strengths and interests and capabilities of all your staff are, and then building on that and using that as a really good springboard. So if you've got a staff member that knows about Ealing, or if you've got a staff member that knows about Rongoa, um, or if you've got a staff member that has a passion for paddle boarding, you know, use all those things in your school camp and that can help to reduce the barriers of cost as well and, and building up the, um, the empowerment of your staff. Definitely connect with other organisations and schools as well. You might be able to share some resources. So that's it for the, um, the presentation part. Um, what I'll do is I will just go through some uh, quick housekeeping things and talk to you about the upcoming webinars, and then we'll have question time. Um, so we have two more webinars coming up. One is on Thursday, the 26th of August, and that's about unpacking four key concepts that we deliver or talk to in the Revisioning School Camps Professional Development. Um, and they re really help to frame schools in their planning process. And then we also have our final webinar on Thursday the 9th of September, and that is where we have two of our case study schools share their experiences. And they talk to some parts um, or some aspects of their planning and learning that um, a lot of you might find interesting. Um, you can, we're, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna be uploading these webinars to our EON's website. So you can go back and have a look at these at any time. And also remember to check out the um, Revisioning School Camps Professional Development tab where we do have a bunch of resources there available. Now we are also running three more workshops um, in November this year. So we're running one in South Auckland, one in Levin and one in Timaru. So if you're interested in finding out more, please go to the website and you can also register there for one of the upcoming workshops. Otherwise, stick around if you've got some questions and I'll answer those. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope it's been helpful. And if you have any questions, then you can email me at pld at eons.org.nz. Fabulous. Thanks so much. And I'll see you next time. Please stick around if you've got questions. Kia ora.